This is our campsite. So one thing when you're camping in the tropics is vestibules of tents really aren't enough space for cooking because it just rains constantly. So right there we have this tarp set up over the cooking area. And over here is where our port trusty porters have set up their tent. So they've actually cleared that section of jungle yesterday just to get themselves onto higher ground where it would be drier because the ground here at the main camp area is quite wet. That tent you're looking at there was attacked by a rat last night. So a rat has actually eaten its way through the outer shell to get to some of the food inside. In a moment I'll take you upstairs over here to campsite B where my tent is. Lucky we were not attacked by rats. They're not city rats, they're kind of cute little furry um, native rats. So they're not quite the same as a city rat. So over here is the cooking area. There's a tarp on the ground. It's all pretty wet. So no need for tent poles when you're setting this up. We just use jungle materials. A couple of bits of wood there. So that's a branch that was cut off a tree and at one end it's sharpened like a stake and driven into the ground and there's one of my ropes from one of my previous videos just tied to that tree there supporting the makeshift tent poles there's lots of them around over here we have a trekking pole that one of the porters made for me yesterday out of bamboo now we'll go for a walk Campsite B. It's pretty rough here, so I'll, the camera might get a bit shaky. <clears throat> and here's our tent set up. Another tarp positioned over our tent, and once again, I just mentioned with the sheer amount of rain here, I mean, it, it can rain literally 24 hours a day. So that's why here in the Philippines, in the tropics, it's best to always have a tarp with you that you set that up over your tent or close to your tent so it gives you the option of actually coming outside without getting wet to do a, to go to the toilet or collect some of your equipment so I would not use a vestibule in these conditions it just wouldn't be comfortable so I've got a few makeshift tent poles set up there again and at the top of the makeshift tent poles you just have a pair of old socks, uh, socks that I was wearing yesterday just to protect the top of the tarp. So you can see the other makeshift tent poles around. So all the food is hanging up in the tree, there's my peanut butter. And here's another makeshift tent pole out of a large tree branch. All my food is in that green supermarket bag um, just to keep all the food off the ground because we don't want to tempt those rats and I actually saw a couple of them running around last night so here's a makeshift clothesline so you don't necessarily need rope what I've done is cut out that uh, U-shaped piece of wood driven it into the ground sharpened it at one end like a stake then you have this horizontal section of wood just resting on another Y-shaped piece of uh, jungle branch Again, that's staked into the ground. We have a lot of upright uh, poles also for the tent pegs. There's another one there. So at the top of, the, at the top of that uh, tent peg, just have a piece of equipment drying out. So you can see a lot of our gear is drying out at the moment. So during the night, it's generally about 18 degrees. Right now I think it's about 20 degrees and it's pretty humid, pretty wet, so there's not much chance that the gear will dry completely, but at least it dries a little bit and by keeping your equipment off the ground, it makes it easy to pick it up and gives you some protection from the insects, although there's not terribly many insects at this campsite because we are at 1,400 meters above sea level. Just show you another thing I've got hanging up here in the tree. You'll see this. One of one of the pieces of my titanium cook set. Last night I had my meat inside that pot. 
Another piece of cook set up there. Here's the main cooking area. And a can of isobutane. Sorry, it's not isobutane, it's regular butane. And that black bit of plastic you see right there is the adapter so that you can put a snow peak or pocket rocket um, isobutane burner onto a regular can of butane. So what I do also is dig a hot, small hole in the ground just to stabilize that gas burner while I cook. One thing you have to be careful with uh, with regular butane is it will freeze quite quickly. I've, I've actually seen butane start to freeze at only 10 degrees Celsius. So it's a pretty low quality fuel compared with isobutane or shellite. But it's highly available here in the Philippines. Just come back around again. Give you another view. That's my event jacket drying on top of the tent. So it's a event is an innovation of Gore-Tex. The tent itself is made also of event in the UK. Let's just zip back around to campsite A and show you what's happening over here. See if there's any developments because we are about to move out on a bit of a day hike to the summit of the local mountains. <clears throat> so underneath that tent that was attacked by rats you can see how uh, the porters have used the jungle that they've cleared. Uh, there's like a cushion underneath the tent that has helped to keep the tent at, le at least a little bit drier than it otherwise would be. There's one of the trusty porters, another one guy. Here's their campsite. Again, absolutely no need for tent pegs. All the guy lines are just pegged down with bits of wood. Some people might wonder why I carry a machete. Believe me, in here in the jungle, it is an extremely necessary item. And you wouldn't believe some of the things these guys can make with machetes. They even make houses using only a machete. There's Kuya's machete. Local bowler. So the ground we're standing on here looks like it's probably only about one or one and a half meters above the height of that lake. And I am told that this campsite has never flooded, it never does flood, even in a typhoon. The water level never rises to the height of that campground. Personally, I wouldn't feel completely comfortable camping only one and a half meters above the height of a lake. So that's why I moved my campsite up to Camp B area. There's some fish in this lake too. A couple of bits and pieces of uh, fishing line there. Over here is someone's makeshift fishing rod. Beautiful rod there. Obviously made out of bamboo. Very thin on the end. There's a line attached. So again, they would use their machetes to cut out that piece of bamboo. And that's about all I've got to say about this campsite. Thanks for watching and stay tuned because we've got more campsites coming. More, 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 more shopping, more. Beautiful. <laughs> nice, Sarah.